Hey guys, welcome to the second synthesis video. And so in the first one, we kind of went through the synthesis toolbox and did an example along the way. So in this case, I'm going to go over one of these reactions right here. That's going to be this one over here. Um, the one I'm putting in blue on the right. Okay, and that's the cut. And so we're going to go over exactly how we do this again, all right? Just a little bit more in depth and a little bit clearer in case someone was anyone was confused. Because this is probably the most confusing thing for synthesis, okay? So uh, let's actually just rewrite the synthesis toolbox here. Actually, I'm just going to move it so that we can see it. Okay. And so here's our synthesis toolbox over here. And so we can see that our OH1 is going to be that run right there. Okay. So remember, when we do synthesis, we're going to want to go backwards. Okay. Uh, it's always usually easier. And so we can see on the right hand side, we have an OH and it's got, it's on a, down to a carbon, right? With essentially three R groups. One of them is a carbon chain. The other two could be either hydrogens or other carbon chains, okay? And so all we do when we do a cut is you pick one of the bonds, okay, that the carbon, the OH is on. So pick one of the bonds coming off of it and cut it. So we're going to have two options here. We cut that or that. Okay, so we're going to do it two ways. I'm going to do the one in red first. Okay, and so what do we do? First, I always suggest number them, number all your atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Always number it, please. Okay, so we're cutting the carbon bond between three and four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, draw both of the uh, structures after you cut it, all right? Only the carbon parts of them. So let's see. So on the left-hand side, you have this. And always number, please, one, two, three, plus... And we have four, five, six, seven. Okay, so all of the carbon substituents are accounted for. And I always, you always need to number it just to make sure that your carbons are accounted for. You really don't want to be in a situation where you add an extra carbon and then your entire synthesis after that is incorrect. Okay, or even remove one. Please make sure to number your atoms. It makes everything much easier. And so we cut between three and four. All right, and so now you what you want to do is look at the carbon that the OH is on. That carbon becomes a carbonyl. All right, so we had our OH there at three, so now it just becomes carbonyl, and there is an H over there. So like you remember that there is an uh, H over there, so I'm just going to put the H right there. So that's one of our reactants, and the carbon of the bond that we cut that did not have the OH has a lithium coming off of it. Okay, so we cut the three and four bond. And so off of carbon four, we have a lithium. All right. And so that's how we do that. And uh, again, you're going to want to, we have to number our reagents and everything, right? So I'm going to take this one, the one with the carbonyl, I'm just going to put it right up there number it as step one. Step two is going to be some form of proton. So H plus or just H2O or H3O plus, even something like H2SO4. Perfectly fine. Okay. And so this would be the cut that we have here. Now, remember, you want to watch out for how many atoms they ask. If they say they want your you to synthesize it from four carbons or less, right? That means all the reagents you use must also have four carbons or less. So in this case, I have one, 
two, three, four. Perfectly fine. One, two, three. Great. Four carbons of us for both. If you were in a situation where this right here is more than four car more or more than whatever amount of carbons they asked, what you must do is now you must also work backwards and synthesize that. So you're gonna be going backwards with this one and at the same time going backwards with that one. Okay, that's fine. There are you can have branching points in your synthesis, but just watch out and remember to do it. Okay, so that works as well. Uh, and yeah, and this one usually they'll give you an example where you can't just stop at that. You'll have to keep going because it's too big, so it could be like six carbons, and you'll have to keep working backwards and cutting. All right, and so that's one example of our cut. That was the red one. Now let's look at our uh, purple one. Okay, so we're gonna cut now this way. So we're cutting between two and three. So I'm gonna draw an arrow. So again, draw the carbon substituents first, and always number one, two, number again, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, all of our carbons are accounted for. Now what we need to do is look at the carbon with the OH. That was this carbon right here, carbon three. It had this OH, which is now going to be turned into a carbonyl, like this. And remember there was an H there, so I'm just gonna draw an H. And off of the carbon that uh, was part of the bond that we cut that did not have the oxygen and did not have the alcohol. We put a lithium Li. Okay. And so we have to do that. And now again, we can number our reagents. So usually you, you we put the carbonyl up here. Step one and then step two, we put H plus. Now, if you look, let's see how many carbons we have here. We have one, two, three. Four, five, and so in this case, if they asked for four carbons or less, you must now also go and finish the synthesis for that. Okay, somehow synthesize that. Now again, I'm not going to go through that now, just because you didn't learn one of the reactions um, for synthesis that creates these carbonyls. So I'm just not going to put it for you guys yet. Okay, and this one right over here is fine. It's at two carbons. So if they ask you for two carbons, um, you you wouldn't have to do another cutting step. We can just go backwards, um, writing a lithium like this. And we can end with their BR right there. Okay. Now, I'm, uh, there is another thing you could do. Usually, like you see in the toolbox, the carbonyl reactant is above the arrow, step one. You could also, if it's easier for you guys, swap the spots of the carbonyl with that lithium reagent. Okay, that's still perfectly fine because they're going to be still reacting with each other in the first step. So it's fine to swap them. So I'm going to, I can put this here and put the lithium one there. That way it may be easier to work off of if I have to synthesize, if I have to keep uh, going backwards with my carbonyl. Right? That's what I like to do with the test. Um, if I ever had a cut where one of them wasn't the uh, proper number of carbons, it was still too large. That's the one I would have had on the, my reactant side. All right, so I have done situations where my carbonyl uh, compound was um, the one that had the more substituent, where my lithium one was done. And so I just put the lithium as the step one and my carbonyl substituent as the major reactant. And then again, work backwards cutting that one. Or I just did the normal way as it's shown in the toolbox. Whichever is fine, as long as you always break it down to however many carbons you need. And if anyone is still confused, uh, I can show you guys the mechanism for it, uh, for why we do this. And so we have this lithium here. We have this carbonyl. So remember how I said the lithium is actually, it's a salt. The lithium will have a positive charge. Okay. And this carbon has a negative. Remember, number it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
uh, a lot of people could get confused because we have the lithium, uh, let me change the color, we have the lithium written like this, right? But remember, that's not a carbon right there. And so if I were to draw it with the negative charge, it's actually coming off of carbon too, like this, okay? And so the way that this works is we, the negative attacks the, the carbonyl carbon, and this gets kicked up. And so we're gonna get this structure here. Okay, count your carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have on three an O minus, and our H that we had, part of the aldehyde is there. And that is the end of the step one, and this is why we have them in separate steps. The second step is where we get our protons. So now step two, we have H plus. O minus grabs the H plus, and we get this, okay? If we were to have them all at one step, so as if you did not number your reagents, so I just had the carbonyl and the H plus all together, or the H2 all together, this carbon with the negative charge is very basic, and so rather than attack the carbonyl, it's just gonna attack um, one of the protons. So I'm just gonna go attack this one, and now we're gonna have, um, we're gonna just put another hydrogen there. Okay? And so that's why we need to number them. So please, please make sure that you are numbering your reagents when you're doing this uh, cutting step, okay? Uh, definitely make sure to practice this step. And, and you'll see it in my future videos, I'm gonna go with them slowly in terms of synthesis so we can see the cuts, all right? And hopefully it'll, uh, get easier as you guys practice. I know it's probably the, it's going to be probably the hardest one of the synthesis toolbox to learn. Uh, the other ones aren't as bad. Uh, so yeah, if anything here did not make sense, please feel free to email me. Go to the CLC. TAs are always there to help you guys. Um, and again, if you're watching this on YouTube or something, um, always feel free to comment there because uh, other people may also have the same question and I can always answer it on YouTube and other people watch the video can benefit because if you chances are if you have a question others also have the same question okay and so i'll see you guys in the next video